Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The singles tournament is live and well, and boy, am I thrilled to be joined by a man who, in his skills as an announcer, to say he's great at it would diminish all of his other qualities. Now, sure, Christian Harloff is the best there is, but between Christian and myself, we've read maybe one book in our life. This guy has not only written a book, Back from the Future, he's also the co-host of the Schmodown Rundown, the self-proclaimed vote podcast host extraordinaire, Mr. Brad Gilmore. Brad, was that good enough of an intro for you? Uh, it was adequate, and I appreciate your attempt. Uh, there's always We can always do it again if you want to run it back. No, Mark, I'm excited to be here. This is singles tournament action. And I, and look, here's the thing. We have to admit, this year in the Movie Trivia Schmodown, the virtual year, the tournaments have been incredible. And 36-person tournament for the singles tournament, it's going to be great, man. That's right. We've already seen evidence of that in this tournament on the fringes anyway, with all those amazing playing matches we had. And so now we're officially in tournament time. And oh, yeah, the book is available wherever you purchase fine books. That's what I forgot. Anyway, that's what it looks like. I'm merely just here to watch Paul Preston versus Eric Zipper. So you have Powder Keg and you have Z-Man. And uh, Brad, when you look at the landscape of this matchup, you're really talking about two guys out to prove something to the fans, to their factions, and maybe even themselves. Because it's not just a matter of winning or losing a match today, is it? It's a matter of can you show enough here to put fear in the heart of your next opponent? Oh, you're absolutely right. You got to play the long game when it comes to the tournaments. You have to be thinking three steps ahead. You have to have all, always be strategizing for your next opponent, but it is a big game for both of them. You think about Eric Zipper. He had a great showing in that Inner Geekdom uh, tournament earlier this year. He was great. He was great. He came up close, but you know, no cigar as the, as the proverbial phrase goes. And then Paul Preston, we haven't seen a whole hell of a lot of him, but last season he was talked about as rookie of the year. This is a guy who we saw early, early on had all the goods, as they might say. So I'm excited to see these two Glock horns and clash in this singles tournament. I, I don't know what I'm more excited about, to be honest with, is the actual match we're about to get or just the verbal war of the words that is about to ensue between the Dun and the Den and the Dungeon. I mean, it, we, this is not the first time that they've locked horns, as you Texans would say, but man, this is about to get really spicy, and it may not be the last time we see them go head to head in this tournament, Brad. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, these are two factions that have no love lost for each other, and these are two factions where this game means a whole hell of a lot. The Den for a long time was right there. They were knocking at the door to the Finstock Exchange to take over that number one spot. And then the Dungeon, they went money ball with their strategy this season. And it hasn't exactly gone the way that they wanted. So any points are appreciated when you're talking about Kaiser and the Dungeon. That's very true, and we just saw the look at the current faction standings, but when you think about a tournament this early, Brad, don't you just still get that, I, it, it's, it's tough to say in this sports landscape, but that spring training optimism where it's so early, anything can happen, any faction can run ahead of somebody else. A big lead does not necessarily mean there's no coming back. Oh, absolutely right. And in a tournament, we know, Mark, we're sports fans. You know, March Madness, NCAA, anything can happen. All of a sudden, Zion and Duke, they're out of there. So you never know what's going to happen in the tournament season. That's why it's so unpredictable, but it's always so much fun. There's only one thing you can count on like death and taxes here in the Schmodown, and that is that Nerd Chronic is going to give us a great promo. Let's take a look at what each competitor and their faction managers had to say. Day six. Hotel quarantine. I'm already out of spicy salami and uh, Gouda cheese. Um, is this a good angle? Okay, here we go. Paul Preston and Eric Zipper. I cannot believe this is a first round match. You know, this is a big season for Zipper. He uh, had a good run in the IG tournament. Fell a little short, but this is his redemption singles. And my man is gonna light it up against Paul Powder Shake Preston. That's right, we're kicking you back to the frat house, kid. Well, 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 here we are again. It's the singles tournament. And once again, Powder Keg is getting disrespected. The Powder Keg is no joke. He's becoming one of these Schmodown pros now that people really wanna see compete. Total trivia ownage. Having to play, uh, I got a match against. Eric Zipper. I'll give you a second to remember who that is. And your winner, Sassy Stacy Howard! 
I really care about this game and I really know that I have it in me to, to play at a level higher than I've been playing. That's what's gonna happen when I come into the singles tournament, is I'm gonna play from, from a place of passion. We need to be reminded to just listen for the whining. Wherever he is, you can always hear him whining about he's always losing. If you want to advance in the tournament, three words, W-I-N. Uh, you know, Zipper's part of the dungeon, or as I like to call him, the dungeon. You know, <laughs> I just came up with that now. You can use it if you want. I call him the dungeon. Yeah, that's right. I made that up. I know for a fact that I have it in me to be one of the top tier players in this game. People are finally going to see that when I beat Paul Preston. January. Comedy store, Schmodown draft, powder cake sitting there waiting for someone to want to win bad enough that they draft it. He picks a. Robert Parker. I'm going with Paul Preston. She showed the energy and the desire to win, the desire to raise some hell. Because hell deserves to be raised in the Schmoda. Hell and wins. It's coming at you. Yeah, I could have drafted Paul Powdered Milk Preston, but I passed. Missed opportunity there. Hey, you know what? There's a great name for your faction. Missed opportunity. Okay, but Paul Preston, he doesn't scare me. You know who my new team partner is? Adam Witt. So he jumped ship from Paul, and now he's partnering up with me. So what does that tell you about who's better, about who's going to win this match? Powder kick, winning record. Look, Adam Witt's going to get antsy over there, OK? Look, I know that guy. He's, he's itching for something bigger and something better. And so am I. You know, I'm ready to go. Let him go hang out in Kate's House of Horrors, which is her laundry room, where mommy hides the schnapps. Uh, I got you a bunch of tickets. You could take them to a carnival and maybe win something, um, just so you could know what it feels like to win. Brad, they're not shy. Uh, the <laughs> These guys, Zipper, I just think he does, like what you said earlier, has a lot of confidence, even though he didn't get to the top of the mound in that inner geekdom playoff format. I think that he got his reps and he's got a good sweat going right now. Paul, sure, he may be on ice for a little bit, but that guy looks raring to go. He feels a little bit like Stallone when he came out of the chamber in Demolition Man, where he didn't need a break to go figure out what's going on in this new world. He was just ready for action. Like, I'm pretty sure Paul Preston and Mike Tyson are of similar age, and Mike's about to come out of the cage and, and scrap with Roy Jones Jr., of course. So Paul Preston's going to come out swinging, and he's going to have a lot of heavy shots early on. Eric Zipper, you're right. You don't have to win the tournament to know I can hang with these guys. And he's used to the format. He knows what he needs to do. He is the singles player for the dungeon. So we're going to see an all-timer here in the first round. As we uh, issue a special hello to all of our Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon members out there. I'm sure you are following along, commenting with the action as loyal fans you always have been. We encourage you to check out the Schmodown here, wherever you digest your podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts if we're just too handsome to stare at. But Brad, enough preamble. Let's get to the appetizer before we hit the main match. And that would be the faction managers. That would be introducing first is the dungeon representative. He is Kaiser. <laughs> and there's Trash Mouth himself. And he is going to be joined by his counterparts in the managerial matchup tonight. And that would be Kate Mulligan and Grace Hancock. They of the den. Hello, ladies. And hello, hello. Kaiser. I know we have a lot of questions for y'all before this matchup begins. Kate, you look confused. I just, what is Kaiser wearing? He looks like a well, character I mean, from Hook. What we're, what we, it's very little known, but I, I do have to say just right off the top, I want to congratulate Kaiser because I don't know if a lot of people know, but the dungeon has actually recently been purchased by Joe Exotic. So I think he looks oh. great and we're really happy for you. Oh, that's great news. Congrats, Kais. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you two hags a quick question. Uh, what do you got going on after the match? You going to bingo? Maybe watch a new heart marathon on Hallmark? What, what do you guys got going no, on? No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fill great. my report out. I'm gonna fill your my report out for your parole officer and say you behave real well. And I attest that everything I say in this report is true. And hopefully you'll get to come out on parole again next weekend. You know. Kate, right. what'd you have for uh, breakfast? Sausage right, let's with uh, let's skip sausage? the extracurriculars and let's just try to actually get to oh. the matchup at hand oh, okay. here. Uh, Kaiser, going to start with you, and then I'd love this question to be answered by 
the den as well. When you look at your competitor today, in your case, Kaiser, uh, do you think that this is a shot not just to win this match, but maybe to make a serious run and get your faction some much needed points in this tournament? You know, it would be a lot easier to train these guys if uh, Grace wasn't outside the dungeon throwing rocks at the window. I know that's you. Don't act like, you act like it's not you. I know you throw rocks, fireworks. She, you're, you're honestly, you, you really need to get, get yourself in check. I know you're involved with witchcraft and all that weird stuff. Just maybe go to a retreat somewhere and, and find the Usa because, you know, here's the thing. Hey, here's the thing. You, you know you're seeing the new zipper, the Z1000. Now, he played a he played a good tournament. He won his first IG match in a tournament. Had a, ran into a tough. Yeah, no, turn that way again. That's that's good with the microphone. Turn that way again. Is this better? No, if you go like this, you know. It's really just better if you answer the question. Yeah. Sorry. You know, I'm, I'm trying to answer a question, and this is what she Sorry. does best. I and poses her. Work. She's like the George Went of the Schmodown. She's always got something to say. She's always piping up. Here's the thing. Zipper is ready for this guy, Paul. Now, I know Paul's out in the wilderness. He's climbing trees. He's uh, naked and afraid in the sequoias. I can't imagine he's been studying. You know, we, we all we've been doing in the dungeon is two things. We've been testing for COVID and Brian Dennehy movies, and I like our chances today. Uh, Brad, I did my best with them. The floor is yours. Well, I want, uh, this goes to the den for Grace and Kate, of course. You know, we saw Paul Preston compete in teams earlier this year. There's uh -huh. going to be a first shot in singles. Obviously, there was the hiccup in the Tom and Paul match. How have you altered your managerial strategy to make sure Paul's successful in this tournament? Uh, I am just going to get out of his way. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm just going to hopefully uh, we can pick Festival Darlings again. You know, that's what I'm hoping. And Grace, how, how important is it for you to beat Trash Mouth Mr. John Kaiser? I mean, it's not so much that it's important because I think that winning for the den is always important and always obviously a priority, but it's just, it's a very, it's like when I see Shannon, it's just like the, it's the most pleasurable, fine, fine wine, just watching these poor little babies just stumble around and be so afraid of me. I have to say it's my favorite part of this whole thing. So is it important? Sure. But just him quivering over there is enough. Is, is, that's the best part of all of this for me. All right. Well, that is the managers, and that is their pregame spiel as they Can get I their say one last thing, Mark. For combat. one last thing, one last thing. If Sorry. anything, these new Zoom matches, the one advantage, it keeps me away from Grace. It, it, the restraining order is intact, so <laughs> I actually kind of prefer it this way when I'm playing against the Den. That's right. We'll have to see if Grace honors that restraining order when she shows up front row to see your Poison cover band play live at Jumbo's Clown Room. Thank you to both Rufio and, and to the dungeon. Brad, uh, look, it maybe it wears on our nerves a little bit. Maybe we get a little afraid before the matchup, but you do have to applaud the managers for just how seriously they take this matchup and their feud with each other. Well, they absolutely know what's on the line here. They know what this singles tournament means for those faction rankings going into the Schmodown Spectacular in December. So they're definitely coming to play today. All right. So I think we're about ready to go. Do you, do you want to ask me the question? Should I? I, I, do, I do have one question for you. And, and, and the question is, are you ready? Oh, I've been waiting for that question for a long time, sir. The answer is a decided yes. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! Introducing first, representing the dungeon, with a record of one win, one defeat, he is Eric the Z-Man Zipper! And there is hey Z-Man. Look at Z-Man, just the... Uh... This is on the side of the hit very superhero, and why not with that intro from Brad Gilmore? Brad, quite a throaty introduction you had there. Do you have any left left for a question? No, I definitely do. Eric, you you were so impressive in that Intergeek to match. I think that you've been on the precipice of greatness in the movie trivia Schmodown. What would it mean for you in the first round in this ultimate Schmodown tournament to go out there and get a big victory over somebody like Paul Preston? Yeah, I mean, 
it's become clear to me that the Schmodown doesn't want me to win. I keep getting who said it in 80s and all these ridiculous categories. So I'm here to challenge destiny, to challenge fate, to say that I'm going to win no matter what. Because I'm a nerd, and I've been dealing with guys like Paul Preston my entire life with his protein powder and his confidence. He's out living a rich and fulfilling life, and you know where I am? In the dungeon, studying movies. That's why I'm going to win. So I'm ready. Let's do this. So this feels kind of like the classic 80s high school rom-com where you might be the underdog and Paul Preston might be the star quarterback. Is that how you're looking at this matchup, Z, man? When you look at Paul Preston, are you seeing just a guy that you're ready to knock him off his high horse? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, in singles, he and I, I like, he's played more matches than me, but... I feel really good about the way I've been playing in singles. And I think if there's anyone that is going to knock him off of that horse, it's this guy. And, you know, Z-Man, you're coming off that Inner Geekdom tournament, which I think you did very, very well in. You impressed a lot of people. Are you bringing in that newfound confidence into this tournament? 100%. You know, uh, I put a lot of work into that Inner Geekdom tournament. And that is the Eric Zipper that is here to stay in the Schmodown. Uh, this Eric Zipper wins, plain and simple. All right, well, Z-Man, we're gonna put you in the waiting room for just a second while Brad, if you've taken a few just quick hits of air, it was a pretty impressive first intro. How do you feel about this one? And his opponent, representing the Den, with a record of three wins, two defeats, and one knockout, he is the Powder King, Paul Preston! Oh, hey. Didn't see you there, but it's... Okay, <laughs> wait a second. Where's Harlow? Harlow right. never comes down here and calls one of my matches. I'm he sorry about that. He's, uh, Christian Harloff is currently on assignment. He is on Schmodown Island recruiting the next great Schmodown competitor. But, Brad, I'm sure now, given the reading material that Paul has, you probably have a lot to talk about. Absolutely. But, Paul, I want to ask you, in the tournament last year, the singles tournament last year, you had a phenomenal showing. A lot of people thought that you may have gone all the way. You came up a bit short. What are you? Th what is your mentality going into this new tournament this year? Listen, you know, you can talk all you want about studying. Studying just catches you up to me, all right? I know all this stuff. I've seen all the movies. I've lived all the movies. I've absorbed all the movies. They're all up here. So yeah, I had to go to Yosemite. I had to climb a tree. I had to walk in a river. I had to dodge bear poop. I had a lot to do to clear the head, get the body in shape, and make sure everything's okay for a match like this. And now that I'm good, now that I'm in the zone, it's all just gonna flow out of me, bro. It's gonna flow right out. It's gonna take uh, little nerds like Zipper down. Yeah, it seems like with your extended offseason, Paul, you've ditched the whey protein powder for a more animal-friendly source of protein. You're eating plants, eating bamboo. Where is the powder keg flourish that we saw last season? Oh, well, listen, I can't come in here and you know do the powder like this. I mean, I, I keep a I keep a tidy home. You know, I'm not an, I'm not an animal. I may say I'm in the woods, but it doesn't mean I've suddenly become a raccoon or something. There, uh, baby shark. Yeah, all right, that's uh, clearly you have more love for your own humble abode than you do for our movie trivia show studio. <laughs> the answer is tough turf. Am I right? Can we get on with this? That is, in no world is that going to be a correct answer today. That's on you guys. Oh, one more question for you, though. What do you think about your opponent, Eric Zipper? What, what, when you see his face, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? He's got a pretty punchable face, right? That guy? Hey, guys like him. Listen, I love the inner geekdoms. I love the uh, whole Nerdenheimer brackets. Listen, this is real movie trivia, and this is where the men, you know, stay men and the boys stay boys. So that's what's going to happen at the end of this. Uh, Brad, I, I just caught Teen Wolf on TV the other day, and I'm getting real Mick versus Scott Howard vibes from this matchup. Sorry to take another Michael J. Fox movie, but I think that's how I'm reading this situation. And we are about to put the book down and get to the movie trivia showdown match. So, Powder Keg, we're going to throw you in the waiting room just for a second as we bring in both Z-Man and Paul, and we're about to read the rules of round number one. This is, as Paul so eloquently stated, not an inner geekdom matchup. Thus, in round number one, you're gonna have eight questions from eight different corners of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Wink and wink. As soon as we ask a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have at home on whatever 
writing surface you provided for yourself. Once we ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into your microphone of choice. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you wanna buy yourself some time to get that correct answer from the back of your noggin to the front, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate a challenge, but your manager must come in, ratify and confirm said challenge for it to officially occur. Uh, Eric, do you understand the rules as I have read them to you, sir? Yep, let's do this. And Paul? Yeah, that was English. Well then, Mark, there's only one thing left to say. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to schmodown! Ooh, man, you've been practicing that. The throat of Brad Gilmore, as platinum as it gets. Sir, I defer to you for the first question. All right, gentlemen, your first question in Action Adventure. Which Die Hard sequel takes place in Russia and involves John's son, Jack McClane? Do need the name of the film here. Yeah, I really, uh, really thought long and hard about the naming of the sun. Four <laughs> letters, J name. I like it. Go to five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Paul. All right, we are gonna go to. Yeah. Come on, come on. He was still <laughs> writing. Do you want a challenge? No, it's just bull. It it's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh. I do see a challenge in the chat. Are we going to have a challenge after question number one? Here's the thing, Paul. We're going to make this quick and easy for you so you can get back to your job at Speaker City today, okay? Challenge. He was still writing when you already, the clock was up. He was writing. That's a blatant uh, foul. With jokes on you, pal, Speaker City's closed because of COVID-19. All right. We are going to have school, the challenge. Old nickname in this league. The All right. challenge. Yeah has been issued, and we will be right back with our ruling. We are back and we have a ruling after conferring with the judges. It was evident that yes, time had indeed ran out and Paul Preston was still technically writing, so we cannot accept his answer. He is going to, by proxy, not be eligible to answer this question. Again, he doesn't lose a point because it's round number one, but we will simply go to Eric Z-Man Zipper for his attempt at an answer. Kaiser, challenge was upheld and we'll go knock you back in the waiting room. All right. Z-Man, what do you got? Live free or die hard? That is incorrect. It is incorrect. We're correct. looking for a good day to die hard. I yeah. That. That's what I yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it wasn't a good movie, but it was a good day to die hard. We move on to your next question in round number one, and that is in the world of rom-coms, romantic comedies. And the question... Who plays Julianne Potter, a 27-year-old food critic who realizes she's in love with her best friend, Michael, in My Best Friend's Wedding? Uh, Brad Gilmore, this sounds like quite a romantic entanglement. You ever been in something like that? I've been in many entanglements. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, it's very vague, but it gives me a chance to do the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Well done, gentlemen. Eric, we are going to you first. What was your answer? Julia Roberts. Correct for a point. And Paul. Julia Roberts. He is correct, and it is all tied up. One apiece, Brad. One apiece as we go to category number three, or question number three, excuse me, in the category of dramas. You'll find supporting roles from Lawrence Fishburne, Harrison Ford, Scott Glenn, and Dennis Harper, Hopper, excuse me, in what 1979 war film? Wow, that is quite an impressive cast. And I believe that was a couple years before you came into the world, Brad. I uh, know, one or two. So, speaking of one and two, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to you, Paul Preston. Apocalypse Now. It is indeed right now, and Eric Zipper. Apocalypse Now. He also had it, knotted up at two, and they've gotten two out of three correct as we move on to your fourth question in round number one, and that is in the world of crime movies. Crime movies, illegal stuff. Kaiser knows about that. Your question. The Safdie brothers directed what actor in Uncut Gems as the film's lead 
Howard Ratner. A lot of, a lot of award buzz around uh, uncut gems. A lot of people were talking about this film. Did you ever see it? Uh, started it, have not finished. Working on it. Five, four, three. It takes me a while sometimes. Two, one. Ben's down. Z-Man, back to you. I love this movie. I love this performance. Adam Sandler. You are correct. Keep it tied. Same. Paul's got the same. Does have Adam Sandler. Very easily stated there, so I didn't need him to actually repeat it. Adam Sandler. All right. Well, well that gives Wait, are we holding for a Kaiser challenge? <laughs> Wait, I think we're good. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Uh, it's still tied going into question number five in fantasy sci-fi. That is fantasy or science fiction. Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford co-star in what 2011 sci-fi film? Oh, I think I uh, think we're getting a little clue as to who our writer's favorite actor might be. Uh, maybe, maybe. But both ruggedly handsome individuals. They are, as are we. Five. What about the writers? Four, three, two, one. Ben's down. Paul Preston. Cowboys and aliens. Nailed it. And Z-Man to tie. Cowboys and aliens. We remain tied and we move on to your next question. And it is in category six. And this is in the category of comedies ha 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 ha, ha. Yeah, hard, okay. hard. you're a question which actor known for playing a famous mcu hero stars as the teen jake in the 2001 film not another teen movie and uh, you know brad this is right around the time i was just kind of starting to lose my faith in spoof comedy as a movie genre i don't really remember 2001 Bye. Four. You were born though, right? Three. Maybe. Two. One. Pens down. I'm getting older by the day. Z Man, what do you got? Chris Evans. It is, in fact, Chris Evans and Powder Keg. Chris Evans. Okay, so wow. we remain not. It's a good match we got here going. It's definitely neck and neck as we get to question number seven in the category of horror slash thriller. Uh, that is not the Michael Jackson album, it is the sub genre in film. What? 1984 horror film has a teenage protagonist named Nancy Thompson and gave us one of horror's most iconic slashers for the first time. All right, but since you asked the question, now I do get to ask you, what's your favorite cut off thriller, the album? Oh, PYT, man, Pretty Young Bang. Oh, I gotta go beat it, man, for that guitar solo. Inspired great guitars, five. I've heard four, oh. three, two, one. Pens down, Z-Man, what's the answer? Nightmare on Elm Street. It is Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, the classic. Does Powder Keg have it? A uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, he does. We'll accept that ST with the period. You're gonna accept it without the uh too. Look, you guys are generous today. Thank you. <laughs> well, we gave you a nice test early, so we're being lenient. Your last question to see if we can keep this tied, or if someone's gonna take the lead going into round number two, is in the world of animated movies. These are movies drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question. Who directed 2005's stop-motion animated film, The Corpse Bride? All right, good question to close it out here, Brad. Shake it out. He knows the answer. Can you this time? Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Paul, your answer. Is it Henry Selick? It's not Henry Selick. Does Z-Man have it for the lead? Tim Burton. He does, and it is seven to six in favor of Eric Z-Man Zipper as we head in to round number two. That is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and ultimately justice. Here's how it's going to work. Each competitor is going to have a spin at the wheel. If you don't like what you spun, you are awarded a mulligan, not Kate's last name, but that is golf for do-over. Once you settle on a category, you're going to be asked four questions in that wacky world. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. All right, so Powder Keg is trailing Z-Man by one at this point. So, Brad, it is Z-Man's call. Would you like to spin first, or would you like to defer to your opponent? I don't know why Kate is here. All right, Zipper. Oh, <laughs> Boy, I got uh, In addition to getting Brad Gilmore from El Camino College, did you also get their videography department? 
Uh, Kaiser, Z-Man, you guys want to spin first or defer to your opponent? I would like to defer. Okay, he's going to defer, which gives me a great opportunity to remind both parties that there is a sponsored slice on the wheel, and that sponsored slice is Matt and Ben. You can probably guess which Matt and Ben we're talking about. If someone spins that and keeps it, we will say the name of that movie trivia schmodown patron that sponsored the slice. Once again, thank you to all of our loyal Patreon members. Well, Brad, we're going to bring back in Powder Keg and his manager. That would be there's the a dead mother Kate Mulligan. I almost got to give him all the wrong answers, too. I was so close, Polly. Oh, all right, I so forgot. I forgot. Wait, listen. We're having a we're having a rough time. I forgot. I forgot, Polly. Don't worry. I got your protein shake. Just reach. Just reach. Right. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. OK, there you go, buddy. You got it. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Good boy. OK, so now. Pal, first of all, you're doing great. Your penmanship's way better than the zips, okay? I know you wrote a little long, but at least you wrote the right answer. You and I both know it. And I right. didn't get to see, but I asked, hey, you want me to challenge that, Paul? He didn't put a uh, nightmare on Elm Street. He just put nightmare on Elm Street. So listen, you didn't see it. Our moment to challenge is, is over. We don't need to worry about it. You know why? You got this thing locked up, pal. All right, I believe you. By the way, I haven't seen you since July 4th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had that great uh, macaroni salad at that oh, yeah. oh, uh, great. distancing picnic that you had. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't drink it because of all the carbs. I don't like to eat the macaroni yeah. salad and yeah. mayo too. Inspiring words by the manager, and now we oh, move wow. on to the okay, wheel. Wow. And right. Here comes the spin from Powder Keg. The other fate, doom, and destiny, as you call it, Mark. So, so the recipe, if you're if you're curious uh, for that macaroni salad. Ooh, oh barely. God, this feels like a, a stab in the heart. Festival darlings. Jesus. What do you think, Kate? Should we keep it? Okay, you don't have to be hostile about it. Okay, I'm real sorry about that, pal. You just listen. You do. You do whatever you got to do, pal. Knowing that he wants to spin again, is that right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. he wants to spin yeah. again. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, again, bad memories. So, uh, so the so the, uh, the the recipe for that macaroni is actually you just use you just use actual hard macaroni. You don't cook it in advance. It gives it that comic All book right. movies. Okay, man, we talk about fate, doom, and destiny. Festival darlings coming up first. How how appropriate for this match? But then it lands on comic book movies for That's the. Right. And, and it was interesting because, I mean, yeah, they didn't want Festival Darlings necessarily, but they narrowly avoided disaster with opponent's choice. So playing with fate, but that's what the wheel is all about. Uh, Paul, I'll be administering your comic book movie questions. So you're first of four for two points. In the film Batman and Robin, before she became ill, Mr. Freeze gave his wife a necklace shaped like what? Five, four. Can you get the charge of remembering that movie? Two, one. Uh, can I get the multiple choice? You, you can. Uh, try to do it quicker next time. I was right at zero. Uh, is it A, a heart, B, a star, C, an angel, or D, a snowflake? I'm going to go with D. D is correct for a point. Nice multiple choice there. Oh. And Paul Preston is on the board in round number two as we move on to your next question. All righty. Paul, what is the nickname that Tony uses for Thor in 2012's Avengers, which Thor later uses as a password to activate a Quinjet in 2017's Thor Ragnarok? Hmm. Go to five, four. Yeah, multiple. All right. Is it A, Goldilocks, B, Soccer Mom, C, Fabio, or D, Point Break? Do those get a repeat or no? Uh, I can repeat those options once for you. Uh, is it A, Goldilocks, B, Soccer Mom, C, Fabio, or D, Point Break? C. That is incorrect. So for a one point steal, uh, Z-Man, you are gonna get the option. I'm gonna read you the question again, followed by the choices. What is the nickname that Tony uses for Thor in 2012's Avengers, which Thor later uses as a password to activate a Quinjet in 2017's Thor Ragnarok? 
Is it A, Goldilocks, B, Soccer Mom, C, Fabio, or D, Point Break? I already had it written down, Point Break. Didn't need it, just need and yeah. Ruby Kazoom, and Point Break oh, is oh, correct oh. for a point. All right, so a big steal there as we pivot back to Paul Preston. Paul, you have two questions left in the world of comic book movies. Your next one, penultimate one in this round, in the Lego Batman movie. What is the name of the location that Batman sends the Joker to where he assembles a team of supervillains? And we go to five. Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Arkham Asylum, B, Blackgate Penitentiary, C, The Phantom Zone, or D, Glacier Point? The Phantom Zone. That is correct for a point for the powder keg. That was a big, that was a big multiple choice for him. Let's put it back even for us. Eight, eight. It was maneuvering his way around a tough round two slate. And your last question in the world of comic book movies, Paul, who plays the character Wanda Maximoff in the MCU? Elizabeth Olsen. That's a big two point get to close out his round, Brad. He desperately needed those points. He absolutely did. You know, he did the right thing. He went to multiple choice. It obviously wasn't a strong suit for him. This wasn't the category that he wanted on the wheel, but he he hung in there and he's got the lead going into uh, Eric Zipper's turn for round number two. That's right. So, Z-Man, we're going to bring in your manager now, Kaiser, against yeah. our better judgment. And, Kaiser, you and Z-Man will have 60 seconds to confer. Well, brother, I'm feeling these vibes. I don't know about you. You're looking pretty over there. I think you I got... Think, I feel good. I think we got this punk on the rope, so let's uh, let's give her a spin. I learned from my from my Stacey match not to count the points till it's over, but, uh, but I feel good. He's not let's... a punk. He's still a punk. Yeah, it's true. Right. Let's Let's do this. All right, here we go. First spin of the wheel. Spin is in, and Brad, I got to tell you, win or lose, that Z-Man versus Stacey Howard, an all-time classic match. Absolutely, but comic book movies off the board, you know that the strength of Z-Man's, and it lands on Nicole Kidman. He's personally, thinking. Zip, I personally think you spin away. Uh, I know that there's things on there you don't like, but there's also things on there you do. I mean, but yeah. it's really how you feel about Nicole Kidman right now. I feel medium about it. Let's spin again. Why not? First person I've ever heard to say they feel medium. <laughs> I love Nicole Kidman. I just, as far as my, uh... <laughs> oh, you don't have to explain it to me. Round and round it goes, and almost Ooh. ends. It's wow. Wow. But it does land in the 2010s, so that is going to be Z-Man's category. And Brad Gilmer will be asking the questions. Once again, multiple choice is an option, should you not know the answer right off the bat. All right, Eric Zipper. Your first question in 2010s. Which MCU actor has had small roles in the following three films? The Five-Year Engagement, Zero Dark Thirty, and Her. Uh, that would be Chris Pratt. That is correct for two points. And Z-Man ties it up. It's 10-10. He's still got a lot to go in round number two. So let's get to his second question. Eric, your second question <laughs> in the 10s. What 2010s movie opens with a big musical number on a Los Angeles freeway? La La Land. That is correct for another two points. Eric Zipper, not doing bad so far, Mark, in 2010s. Time for your third question, or as Mark, you would say, the penultimate question. <laughs> That's uh, not my word. <laughs> I think that you made it up. I swear. Uh, it a fun thing is, the third to last is the anti penultimate question. Oh. So you can start using that one too, Mark. You, you ruined my secret for next season. That is fun. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, Eric, your third question in 2010. What actor portrays the character simply known as the wise man who appears as a guiding force for the girls in the dream sequences in the 2011 movie Sucker Punch? I'm going to go multiple choice on this one. All right, multiple choice. Here they are. Your multiple choice answers are, is it A, Scott Glenn, B, Oscar Isaac, C, John Hamm, or D, Anthony Hopkins? Scott Glenn. 
Scott Glenn is correct for one more point for Eric Zipper. Wow. Great pull there by the Z-Man. And it gives us to our final question in 2010s for Eric Zipper's round number two. And your fourth question. What 2014 film follows the character Riggin Thompson as he tries to launch a Broadway adaptation of the short story, What We Talk About When We Talk About Love? Let me go multiple choice on this one. All right. And your multiple choice answers are, is it A, Begin Again, B, Collateral Beauty, C, The Artist, or D, Birdman? Uh, Birdman. And that is correct for one point. Eric Zipper doing phenomenally, Mark, in that second round. That's right. A nice set of answers there from Z-Man. But I will say this, Brad, is that he could have done serious damage to Paul Preston's chances. But if I'm powder keg, sure, I'm losing. I'm not happy about that going into the final round, potentially. But a four-point lead, as we've seen, is not insurmountable. So anything can happen. Bottom line, hold on to your hats, folks, as we progress into round number three. Like I said, this is the final round unless we go to sudden death overtime, which we are prepared for, the writers have assured me. So here's how round number three works. We need three numbers from each competitor. They may not be the same numbers as your opponent. We need three numbers that range from one to 20 because these numbers correspond to a different corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Your first number is gonna to correspond to your two-point question. Next one is your three-point question. Your final one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. So Z-Man, because you're enjoying a four-point lead, 14 to 10, you are gonna give us your three numbers first. Uh, do I get Kaiser in here to talk through this with me? You okay. certainly can have your manager go ahead and start your 60 seconds now. Zip, I want, you, I want you to take a deep breath and listen to every question. Use your yeah. repeats. You've got them all, okay, pal? I will. Here's the thing. I always have bad luck when I pick these numbers, so I'm going to let you be my good luck charm, man. Pick three numbers for me. What are the ranges I can choose from? Uh, 1 to 20, sir. 1 to 20. I'm going to go with uh, 9, 5, And seven. Nine, Perfect. five, and seven. Those are Eric Cooper's numbers. Thank All you. All right. He had to think long and hard about which numbers were between one and 20 as he we go really to the Tin Mother and the Powder Keg for their number. Yeah, yeah. Paul, uh, go ahead and give us your numbers, and then we'll start the 60 second countdown for you and your manager, unless you want to consult with your manager about the number selection itself. What do you think? I mean, I, mean, I, didn't, I, hear about, I, I didn't hear about the rest of that uh, macaroni salad because I'm yeah, telling you, when oh, I try new things yeah. around the house here, it's very difficult. You know, I'm yeah. trying to for high in protein, not too mm -hmm. carby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, but you say you mixed up the, the macaroni and put it just in the salad just raw. hard. Just use it raw. Don't yeah, even, don't crunch even put, with celery. put it in raw. Yeah. You put mm -hmm. it in raw and then you put the mayonnaise on. It's great. But uh, well, it seemed like Kaiser didn't know numbers. Am I wrong? It, sounds, it just seemed like it that way. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. You want to be on the den next year? I like people who agree with me. Listen, they uh, got a they got a group called the Dungeon. They don't have a dominatrix. They're doing everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> what they pick? Uh, <laughs> so not what nine, five, seven. They picked. I'm gonna pick yeah. ten, six, and eight. Let okay. There we have it. And eight for the powder keg, Paul Preston. Right. Ten, six, and eight. And now the competitors are welcome back in as we begin the questioning in round number three. All right, Mark. Paul, Preston, you're going to be going first. You selected category number 10, which corresponds, or excuse me, you selected number number, you selected the number 10, which corresponds to the category of musical. And for your two point question, what 2002 musical won best picture at the Academy Awards? Chicago. That is correct for two points. Paul Preston, 12, 14 still. Uh, trailing Eric Z-Man Zipper. So we will go to your next question, your three-point category. You selected number six, and that corresponds to Leonardo DiCaprio films. So give me one moment. That was a quick first answer, Brad. Let's see how he does with this one to take the lead, potentially. All right. And Paul, your question. In which 1998 film does Leonardo DiCaprio play two different roles.
Five, four, three. Uh, JTE. In which 1998 film does DiCaprio play two different roles? The Beach? That is incorrect. We are looking for the man in the iron mask. Now, Mark, that sets up something very, very, very crazy for Mr. Paul Preston. He has to answer his five-point question to avoid the TKO. That's right. It all comes down to this. If he gets it correct, he's not only going to take the lead off step, he's also going to take the prospect of a TKO off the table. So a lot riding on this one question, Brad. All right. And you selected for your five-point question category number eight, which corresponds to Pixar and your question at as of the end of 2019 how many Pixar films has Michael Giacchino provided the score this is 20 seconds for this one And we're going to go to five, four, three, two. JTE. As of the end of 2019, how many Pixar films has Michael Giacchino provided the score? 20 seconds on the clock. Six. And your winner, <laughs> the Z Man <laughs> The answer was seven. Mm. One off from it, so close. It was the Incredibles, Ratatouille, Up, Cars, Inside Out, Coco, and the Incredibles 2. Oh, heartbreak. Z, Z, Z 1000. Eric Zipper, we, we heard you exclaim oh my in jubilation. How do you feel right now? TKO of Paul Preston. I feel amazing, you know? I, I've been spending my entire life waiting for my luck to turn around, and here we go. It finally happened. Uh, it it feels great, man. It's, uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm like at a loss for words. So hey, I'll let Kaiser, Kaiser, how do I feel? Well, you know, truth is, we, we had a little bit of advice from Adam Witt, you know, uh, Preston's old tag team partner. He said, if you get Harrison Ford films or leggy brunettes, you spin away from that. That didn't happen. But I got to say, we've been in the dungeon training day and night. Last night, me and Zip were going till midnight. We've been getting this kid ready. I mean, I can't be more proud of this guy. I drafted, you know, I drafted this guy to come back to our family and deliver. And boy, has he elevated his game. He played a good IG tournament, and here he is in the first round with a TKO. I love this kid. He's a brother. He's a teammate, and he made the dungeon proud today, and I couldn't be more freaking ecstatic. And, uh, Kaiser, as we get a look at the updated standings now, with that TKO, it is really going to be a boon for your faction, maybe not just in terms of standings, but also in terms of the rest of the faction, the dungeon that's going to be competing in this tournament. What does this victory, this early in the tournament, do not just for Z-Man going forward, but for all of your stable looking and being inspired by this performance? It's a, it's a, it's a win for the whole team. Everything we do in the dungeon is a win for the whole team. <clears throat> when these guys aren't playing, they're training each other. When they're, when they're, you know, and so, I mean, it's, it's all for one and one for all. And and I think the rest of the dungeon is going to look at what Zip did and they're going to be completely inspired. He is, as Smets likes to say, one of the OGs of the dungeon. And boy, did he deliver. I can't wait to, you know, watch how this tournament's going to turn out for him. I'm really excited. He's playing at a, at a, at a insanely high level. And Eric, what, what do you think that you did in the preparation leading up to this match that led to your success? Uh... Adam Witt actually told me he was like, the best way to study is to just do the thing we love, which is talking about movies. And so instead of just forcing note cards and information in my brain, I've been trying to just indulge my love of movies by talking about movies with my friends and just 
making sure that that knowledge is something I can relate to memories and things that I care about and have strong feelings about instead of just rote, you know, memorization. Uh, so that's been a huge, huge part of it. All right. Uh, Kaiser, any closing remarks for you, your competitor, or your faction as we say goodnight? I'll tell you, the powder keg is a damn good competitor. I mean, to, to go up against yes. a guy like that, who's one of the best yeah. players in this game, and come away with a win is no easy task for any team in this league. So you got to give Preston all the props in the world. Now, 100%. He, now he can go back to, you know, naked and afraid. I'm sure Discovery Channel and his manager are wondering where he is. He somehow found Wi-Fi in a Denny's bathroom to compete in this match. So uh, good luck with the Paul, rest of the Go ahead. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, Kaiser. But, Paul, uh, maybe this will give you a chance to go watch one of my favorite movies, Possession, starring Sam Neill, which... Uh, which I seem to remember you missing a five-pointer on once. It's great. You should check it out. It's really good. All right. A little bit of shade to close things out here as we say goodnight to uh, Crash. Yeah. yeah. Kaiser, manager of the dungeon. And your winner today, Eric Z-Man Zipper. And now we bring in Paul, the powder keg, Preston, and his manager, the den mother, Mother Den, and that would be Kate Mulligan. So, yeah. uh, Paul, you gave a great effort today in the match. You got stuck with some... Tough questions in the world of comic book movies in round number two, and you just came this close to getting that five-pointer correct. If you had to do it over again, where do you maneuver differently? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. First of all, Zipper, I, I don't speak dork, so I don't know what you said. <laughs> but, <laughs> also, you know, hey, listen, when Tom and I played a match, and, uh, you know, I knew all my questions. I knew all of Tom's questions. I knew all the questions of Deep 13 except two. Today, I didn't know. I thought, hey, I know everything. It's just the other, the other parts of the game that are getting me, the picking the categories, the wheel. Uh, but today, I just didn't know. So, I don't know. Everything's working against me. Now, my knowledge and how the game is played. So, I, I, gotta, I don't know what I got to do. Think back. I'm not going to go beyond Yosemite, go to Death Valley. And I think uh, that's it for me for the year, right? So, I'll see you wow. in January. I'll be in the desert. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm just, I'm just, I want to finish up this letter I'm writing to Adam Witt. Dear Adam Witt, you are a bad, bad guy. You're no longer Paul Preston's best friend. Shame on you. Okay? Shame on you. I'm sending that to him. He gave away all your secrets. He got away with pros. Star Wars. Star you Wars. know, you know, Paul, um, when you got into that second round and you spun away from Festival Darlings, understandably so, and you landed on comic book movies, how did you feel when, when the wheel landed on that slice? I hate the wheel. I hate it. Yeah, I listen. Uh, here's the truth. Festival Darlings, we can still put that on me, okay? It, that we even spun away from it is because I, you know, I ruined that wheel slice for everybody in the den into perpetuity. It's another one you can add to your roster of words to use, Mark. Perpetuity. Look into it. Pentultimate perpetuity. Anyway, bottom line, he had to spin away from it. And then we get, you know, we get Zipper's wheel slice. So, uh, you know, it's. It was a, that was a tough spin. Also, okay. in our defense, uh, no, he didn't spin it. You know, someone with a button spun it. So who knows? It might be rigged. Yeah, uh, none of my mojo got on that electric wheel. Yeah. Mojo's half my game. Yeah. Paul, got to ask you about the the name has come up a bunch in this match alone. Adam Witt. Next time you two cross paths, what's that conversation going to be like? Listen, I don't. I, I, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, Dear Dear Adam Adam Witt, you were a bad, you bad, were a bad guy. Part guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the script right here. Pal. Listen, you think I'm going to veer from the thoughts and feelings of my manager? I'm going to say exactly that. Yeah, so I have to say, I, hearing hearing that those guys were in the dungeon all last night, I do take some accountability. You know, I don't really train with my players mainly because I'm scared of the COVID. But I will say that, uh, you know, I, I, Paul, somebody, I just think that the, he loves this game and he knows what he knows, and I sort of have to support that, like. Listen, this guy, he knows so much. There's so much that he knows. He got a bad, you know, he got a bad wheel slice. And God, that numbers question. You got a no seven. I mean, that's why it's a five. Yeah, I missed Ratatouille. What are you going to do? Everything oh. Kate said is right. Or I might retire. We'll see. Mostly, Adam Witt, you are a bad, bad guy. All right. Getting a lot of insight into, unfortunately, what is today the losing locker room. Thanks to both Paul Preston and... The den mother, Kate Mulligan, for being such good sports. Brad, 
We just saw a match that if it's a harbinger of things to come, it means what? Anything can happen in the movie trivia Schmodown singles tournament. Your big takeaway. What are you going to be talking about? What's the headline story from this match that we're going to listen to on Schmodown Rundown? I mean, the headline story is, of course, Eric Zipper shocks the world. That's a huge upset. And again, beating somebody like Paul Preston in the first round, it's going to give you that I like to call it championship level confidence. When you beat somebody who you're not supposed to beat and you go out there and you do it decisively by TKO, that confidence is going to carry you through the rest of the tournament. Now Eric Zipper has made himself the man to watch going forward. That's right. My only question for Z-Man and for people in his camp or even his own manager would be, look, he had a great performance today. He earned the TKO. But what if Paul Preston had hit that five-pointer? Because then that forces the hand. And then maybe, Brad, do you think Z-Man starts to get shades of what has happened to him? We talked about that Stacey Howard match. You start to get nervous when you're on the verge of not having to answer any question. Then all of a sudden, oh, no, I have to step up in the toughest pressure-packed round. Yeah, definitely pressure would go on for Eric Zipper, but he did he was able to, for those first two rounds, get a pretty good lead. Four points is a lot. We've we've seen it overcome before, but four points is still a big lead in this game. So I think that he would feel confident, and Kaiser hopefully would have been able to keep him calm, cool, and collected so he would have gone out there and gotten the victory anyway. Eric Zipper is, like I said, he has made himself somebody to watch going forward. Very impressive victory. And you have made yourself someone to not only watch, not only to read, but to listen to as well. Like I mentioned, check out Brad and that sultry voice on Schmodown at Rundown alongside Frankie Numbers each and every week for the latest goings on in the world of the movie. Trivia Schmodown, speaking of podcasts, you can listen to the Schmodown wherever you enjoy your podcast. Go ahead and check out Apple Podcasts, rate, review, all that good stuff, and check out our Facebook fan page if you want all the latest in the world of what's going on with the fans, what's going on with the patrons. And last but not least, I say patrons, because I thank all of you for joining the Patreon and supporting us day in and day out. Your support means the world to us. We could not do this show in this crazy world without each and every one of y'all's love and support. Thanks to the Skybound Tech team for working so hard behind the scenes. For Brad Gilmore and his new book, which is available wherever fine books are sold, Back from the Future. And for Christian Harloff, I am Mark Ellis. It's the Schmodown team saying thank you, good night, and stay tuned for the next episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown as the singles tournament continues.